The British royals are in the news again. A certain docu-series has got the world talking. Controversy and speculation, and might I say gossip, is once again being linked to the royals. This is not the first time the monarchy is in the spotlight for all the wrong reasons. Also not the first time it has been accused of racism or mistreatment. The timing of it all, though, is very interesting. You see, the skeletons are once again coming out of the closet at a time when the Buckingham Palace is preparing for the coronation of King Charles III. He will formally ascend the throne on the 6th of May. Now, here's a man who has waited all his life to become king, to step into the shoes that he was supposedly born for, to wear the crown he feels entitled to. But here's the thing, what King Charles III will be wearing will be a crown of dishonor. A crown which has become all but irrelevant. Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus, my name is Priyanka Sharma. This is Ngozi Fulani, she is the founder of a charity. Recently, Fulani was invited to attend an event at the Buckingham Palace. When Fulani went to the event, she was humiliated, harassed, asked about her nationality, her country of origin her parents' nationality. She was asked where her family really came from. All of this because she was black. At one point, Prince William's godmother also moved Fulani's hair to check her badge. You know, to ensure that this woman of color was not trespassing. When the news of this harassment broke, Prince William's godmother resigned from all her posts. She apologized. But did her apology or her resignation make any difference? Hardly. You see, the crown has a checkered history with racism. Let's go back to the 1500s. During the reign of Queen Elizabeth, an Englishman named Captain John Hawkins had managed to capture 300 Africans, bring them to England and sell them as slaves. The profit from the slave trade made Hawkins greedy. He wanted more slaves to sell. So in 1564, Hawkins decided to set sail again. And Queen Elizabeth gave her nod for the journey, also a vessel that Hawkins could use in his slave trade. That is the crown of dishonor for you. It has encouraged slave trade, contributed and cheered slave trade. And why just slavery? The crown is laced with racism. Until the 1960s, the gates of the Buckingham Palace were closed for black men and women. They could only work as servants. People of color were banned from office roles. One would think that the crown would change with time, but it did not. This was Prince Philip. He was the husband of Queen Elizabeth II and the Duke of Edinburgh. He was also infamous for racism. He compared Ethiopian art to a child's artwork, a messy fuse box to some shoddy work done by an Indian. Prince Philip's advice to a British student in China was to come back home quickly or end up with slitty eyes. Like I was saying, infamous for racism. And this is a former royal consort. Racism is one thing that the crown is guilty of, corruption another. Remember the Paradise Papers, the leak through light on global tax avoidance. A lot of prominent firms were named, the likes of Apple, Nike, Meta. Also named in the leak was the Duchy of Lancaster. We are talking about the private estate of Queen Elizabeth II and now of King Charles III. The Paradise Papers said that the estate had used offshore private equity funds to avoid tax payments. Then there were times it tried interfering with legislations to safeguard its own wealth and secrets. Not too long ago, a Guardian investigation revealed that laws were being written, even amended, to protect the Crown. Allow me now to read out an excerpt for you. More than 30 different laws stipulate that police are barred from entering the private Balmoral and Sandringham estates without the Queen's permission to investigate suspected crimes, including wildlife offences and environmental pollution. Remember, such legal immunity is accorded to no other private landowner in the country. The Crown says its job is selfless service. That's something Queen Elizabeth II told the Commonwealth on her 21st birthday back in 1947. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. But what the investigation revealed was a far cry. The Crown was found to influence legislation using an obscure procedure called the Queen's Consent. 
What the palace would do is run laws through the Queen's lawyers to ensure she was not affected in any way. Wherever she was, the Crown would lobby to add or change clauses. Like this one time, when the Queen's lawyers secretly lobbied for her to be immune from parts of a green law in Scotland. The law was making it compulsory for all private landowners of Scotland to sell a certain amount of their land for the construction of pipelines to heat homes and offices using green energy. Queen Elizabeth II, who was one of the largest landowners of Scotland, blackmailed the Scottish Parliament into exempting her. What did she have against Parliament? The Queen's consent, which requires all laws to have the Crown's nod. This is just one of the many exemptions that the Crown managed to secure over the years. And as we speak, employees of the palace can't even pursue racial and sexual discrimination complaints because the Crown is exempted. All of these exemptions were meant for the Queen. In all probability, King Charles III will inherit all of them along with the Crown of Dishonour, which is currently being fixed to fit his head. But what will be King Charles III's role in British society? He will appoint new prime ministers, sign new laws, receive foreign dignitaries, preside over the parliament's opening, also its closing. It's all just a ceremonial role. In reality, King Charles will have no say on the country's law or who should and shouldn't be the prime minister. So you see, there is no real job that King Charles has. But there's a lot of wealth that he gets to sit on. Taxpayers will continue to foot the bill for royal marriages, also for the upkeep of royal property, utilities. Did you know that the sovereign grant, which comes from the taxpayers' pockets, pays for royal travels, even the salaries of the many employees that the royals employ? But in exchange for what? The last remaining emblem of the British Empire or the Great Britain, something that younger generations barely care about. Look at this survey. Only 33% of those aged 18 to 24 support the monarchy. Here's another survey. A majority of under 25s want the monarchy to be gone in 25 years. Outside Britain too, countries are dumping the Commonwealth. Barbados being the latest. Countries don't want to be associated with the crown of dishonor. They don't want to curtsy to a crown of dishonor. One which is dated, one which is obsolete. So it wasn't all that surprising when following Queen Elizabeth II's death, the question of abolishing the monarchy sprung up again. Say the Britons decide to do away with the monarchy. How will that process play out? First, there will have to be a referendum, you know, like Brexit. Then the British Parliament will have to pass a law, but that won't be the end of it. Doing away with the monarchy would leave Britain without a head of state. You see, Britain has a parliamentary form of government. In India too, you have a parliamentary system where there is a clear division of power. There is a head of government, which of course is the prime minister. And you have a head of state, the president. Britain does not have a president. The monarch functions as the head of state. So if the monarchy is abolished, Britain would have to bring in the provision for a president. Or it will have to switch to a presidential system. You know, like the United States, where the president is both the head of state and government. So it is easy to say that the country should abolish the monarchy. But when you get down to working towards that, you are faced with an uphill task. Which may be one of the many reasons why Britain is still celebrating this dated institution. And happily counting down to King Charles III's coronation.